Today we're talking about some of the new features that have been rolling out kind of quietly on the Ancestry platform. This has been going on for a couple of months now, and so we're going to be talking about some of the new DNA features, some of the new tree features, some of, you know, things you may be finding anywhere in the platform. And there is a handout for this. Information about that is in the description box below. If you are new here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family history research. There's so much to cover. Let's get to it. All right, the first feature I want to talk about has to do with the DNA match list. So if we go over to DNA and we drop down to matches, and I have already scrolled down here and have blurred some things out for privacy reasons, but what is new is we no longer have the dots. We now have these little colored boxes with a letter we can actually modify any of that. If I click on add and then edit groups, we can then add this person, this DNA match to any of the groups. Now the ones that have a box around it means that that DNA cousin already is in that group. When I first saw this, it was a little confusing to me. And so I realized, oh, wait a minute, you know, this H is already in there. So you could, rename these if you wanted to with the edit pencil, right? And then change this to a numbering system if you want. I kind of like this because it matches my tree. It did kind of change my color scheme because I had, you know, years ago when I first taught this process of how to group your DNA matches, I had a color scheme on a tree. So I may need to modify that, but still just looking at your tree, you could figure out you know, what's what. So if I jump over to my tree for a moment, you can see here I have Madsen Jensen, right? Which means all of the descendants that have this Gen a Madsen Jensen tag means that I know that this person descends from that ancestral couple. Does that make sense? And so now we can edit these, click the edit button. We can change the colors. We can change the, the, the naming if we want. We can delete the group if we want. And I'm going to go back. We can add more and more. So just the ones with the boxes around it means that you, they're already in that group. But the little plus here means we could add that group to that person if we wanted to. Now, what is interesting as I'm looking at these new ones is that I had originally color coded everything in warm colors, meaning the paternal side and cool colors, meaning the paternal side or the father's side of the family. And now I'm starting to see the colors have changed so much that I don't have that ability anymore because Booth is definitely on my maternal side, which should have been a warmer color. So I may want to go back and recolorize some of these and green just wouldn't make sense to me. But anyway, so I'm going to have to rethink how I do this. You can still, by the way, star these if you want to keep them as a favorite, basically. And that way you can find the starred group as well. Maybe you're working on a special project or something and you want to star some of those that you are working on. You can create a new group right here and give it a name, give it a color. So we have lots of colors to choose from. We can even go black and green, all kinds of different colors. So that that's an improvement. Obviously we'd have to give it a name. It's giving me this red warning that you can't do this without giving it a name. So there you have it. We have more colors. That is something we've been asking for for a while. Here I am again on the DNA match list. And if you click on more filters and then come down to where it says parental sides, and we're going to scroll down a little bit, you'll see a couple things here. It says custom label maternal side, custom label paternal side. You may or may not see this. I had created this when I was creating groups for the maternal and the paternal side before Ancestry started automatically creating maternal and paternal groupings. So you may see this duplicated here. It's the same thing in my case, but this plus here, this is what Ancestry is saying is on your maternal side. And so you would hit apply filters and go on. This one up here is what I created back before they started doing automatic slicing and dicing and figuring out which side is paternal and which side is maternal. Okay. You may see both sides. You may see unassigned. It, it just depends on your DNA test results. Here's a clever little trick that I learned from Donna Rutherford on her YouTube channel. This is kind of cute. 
So if we wanted to add this person, uh, add a group to this person, so let's click here and we're going to create a new group. Now we can give it a color and we can give it a name, right? I don't know. I'm just going to give it a name. All right. And then what we can do, this is kind of cute. I thought this was kind of clever. Let's say we're not going to give it a name, but we're going to give it an emoji. What she was doing is she's on a Windows computer, on a Windows PC, I guess. I don't know about a Mac. You hold the Windows key down and you press the period button and you get a wind, uh, you get emoji screen, right? And you can, I don't know, click emojis all you want. And then you can create the group. I'm not going to do that, but you could it. And you've got a whole little list of, of, of little, uh, emojis that you could add to it. Now, you know, you're very limited on what you've got, but it could be fun. So it says right here, press the star button plus a period to use the emoji in any app. So there's a tip for you. Now, Donna is a great genealogist out of London and I was watching her video and she was covering some of these DNA uh, tricks on Ancestry and she came up with a great little hack that I have to share with you. In fact, she's going to, I'm going to let her show you here in a second. But it has to do with the number of pages, uh, number of items per page, and the number of pages you were seeing over here. So, with her permission, I'm going to share that clip with you from her video on her YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about Donna's YouTube channel, I'll leave a link in the description box uh, to directly go to her channel and to this video. So here, sorry, this is a bit of a messy slide, but if we just work down it. You can see now that the items per page defaults to 20 or 50. Um, it, it's, it seems, sorry, it defaults to 20, but you can change it to 50. You can only step ahead one page at a time. Now that can be a pain if you know you kind of want to get to page 10 quickly. Here's a little tip for you. If you go up to the browser, so when you're on the web on a browser page and it will show me I'm on current page one and I've got 50 items per page. I can go and change this in my browser. So if I change one to 65 and then hit enter, I'll immediately go to page 65 in my match list. And similarly, to get back to page one, I can just go and change that back to one. And I'll end up back at page one. I suspect they might put page number box at the bottom of the page again, like they used to have, but it's not there at the moment. You can only page one page at a time through that. There's no sort of fast forward button, so you can't zoom, zoom through your matches. So in the meantime, you can go where you want to go by changing your browser. So just a little tip. Hey, thanks Donna for letting me use your video in my video. That clip was awesome and we appreciate it again. For the audience, that video link is in the description box. And while you're there, subscribe to her channel. Now, throughout the platform, they have started upgrading and updating the look of the entire platform. What we're going to do now is jump over to Origins. So I'm in the DNA tab, right? DNA. I just was in the Your Results Summary. You could jump straight to Origins from here or click on this box. I'm going to just do it from here. And now we get this map with my ethnicity estimates. And one of the things that a lot of people forget to do is scroll down. Now they do have this AI assist over here, which is kind of new. I haven't really played with it much, but if you want to understand a little bit about how that stuff is working, you can certainly use that. Again, it's in beta, so just be mindful of that. So we have your DNA inheritance and where it came from. And for those who don't have a DNA test, I promise you we're going to get to the rest of the platform here shortly. All right. So if we scroll down, pay attention to this. So my ethnicity estimates were last updated in July of 2023. This is June of 2024. Typically these updates happen in early fall or late summer, like September ish time period. So just know that maybe there's an update coming. We don't know, but this is my experience has been that they often will update it in late summer uh, or early fall. So be on the lookout for that because these ethnicity estimates will update. And what happens is, is as they're narrowing the regions because they're getting more and more test kits, Ancestry now has 25 million test kits out there and they have more than anybody else. So now that they have so many test kits, 
they are able to start narrowing the regions down, which is one of the reasons why you may see differences in regions from company to company also. So as we click into the different regions, you can learn a lot more. Now, this is not really that new. However, some of these AI features that we're starting to see pop in are, it can be helpful in learning about what's going on. So you can play with that. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. Moving away from DNA, we're now in the profile view, and there's a couple little things that I wanted to point out here that are new this year for sure. I don't know that they are new in the last month, but these two little icons up here, ask someone for a photo. This was the kind of stuff that was being rolled out during Roots Tech. And in case you were not aware, you can send an email to somebody and they can help collaborate on this specific ancestor and you can, or, and, or send them a link directly from your personal email uh, system, or you can send them through the ancestry email messaging system. So it's my understanding that they would not need to pay for an Ancestry account in order to collaborate with you on this Ancestor. I haven't tried it. If you have, let me know in the comments how that's working out. I would, I would be very interested to know. So Ancestry is really working hard on trying to get family collaboration. Uh, I've had many conversations with them, especially during the Roots Tech conference. And you could tell that they are really working to move into that direction, okay? The other one, this is Tree Checker. This is part of the Pro Tools. We'll talk about that a little bit later. This one here is the Activity tab, and this is still in beta. And you can see that I have accepted some records and done a little bit of work on this. It looks like last year and then one this year. But if you have asked someone to collaborate with you on this ancestor or whatever. Maybe you wrote an email to grandfather or somebody and said, hey, what do you know about this ancestor? Do you have a photograph? Whatever. When they respond, following that link that I showed you a second ago, it should show up in this activity. Again, if you've had experience with this, with a collaboration, put a comment in the comment sections. I would like to know how that's working. So one thing I want to point out here is on this activity tab, this is not to be confused with the activity tab that is similar yet different in the tree view. Now we're going to jump over to tree view. Okay. Over here in tree view, we have this activity. We have tasks, changes, and viewers. So similarly, if we click on tasks, we can see what tasks I have been working on. So he says, I need to work on my Simmons line. This is a task list for me to remind myself what I need to do next. If this is something you want to use, I use this just as an example. I personally keep all of my to-do list things in my research notes, but you could certainly edit or delete or add or, you know, heart stuff. And if you're collaborating, others may see this as well. So you could then say, hey, sister, could you do this research, you know, if you guys are working together? So view comments and tasks in this tree. Tasks are only visible to tree collaborators. To create a task, add a comment. To assign it, at mention a person or group. So again, Ancestry is pushing that collaboration with groups and stuff. All right, so activities. We go to changes. I'm going to get rid of this provide feedback. All right. So here, when we click on changes, uh, we get a list of things that I've been doing throughout the tree, not just at the ancestor profile. Okay. We can also see who has looked at the tree recently in the past seven days. So this is interesting to note that it says, if people have turned off this feature, their name won't appear in this list. So here's somebody that was uh, looking at my tree. I could message them right from here. Again, another collaboration feature. So here I am in my profile. How you get there is you click on your little face up there and then hit your profile. Now that I'm in my profile, I'm going to scroll down slightly and you can see it says research interests. You click edit. You can see that I already have some in here, but I can click edit and I can add information that about areas that I'm researching 
and surnames that I'm researching, etc. Okay. So once you have this in your profile, you can then go to the areas of interest and see what other members may be searching for similar locations or surnames. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to search member search. And now you can search by username, but unless you know exactly what it is, it's not worth doing. Research interests is something relatively new that I haven't seen at least. I never paid attention to it. So you can search say Simmons, which I think is one of them. And maybe I say Ohio and I'm just going to hit search and see what happens. As you can see, there's a whole mess of people here that are searching the Simmons name in the Ohio area. So this might be an opportunity for me to go search around. You may even be able to narrow it down to the county level, which would be much more beneficial because you could spend days in here just searching, you know, millions of different people by the same surname in the same state. The trick here is that you have to have already put your interests in your profile in order for this to work. At least that was my experience. One of the questions I get a lot is how to turn on the dark mode. Uh, this is a new feature in Ancestry. If you go to the three dot menu and you click on tree viewing options, you can scroll to the bottom and you can turn on and off dark mode. I find dark mode to be very helpful in just about everything I do. Anytime I can turn on dark mode, I do because I spend a lot of time in front of the computer and it hurts my eyes after a while. So uh, dark mode certainly helps. Okay, so let's talk about Pro Tools. So Pro Tools is an add-on to your subscription. And I think in most places it's $10 a month. So I get a lot of questions as to whether it's worth it or not. It, you do not need Pro Tools to do good quality genealogy research. However, it is helpful in a lot of areas when you are, you know, it's convenience. Let's, let's say it's a convenience fee, okay? Because there's a lot of things you can do. One of the things that you can do is check for possible errors, which is this little button over here. You also have some extra features in the fan chart in charts and reports and the tree mapper. Those are the, the big ones that are on this main page here on the tree. So let's start with the fan chart. So if we go over to the fan chart, this fan chart is normally without pro tools set at, I think it's four generations, five generations, I think. With pro tools, you can go up to seven generations, which is nice. Do you need it? Not necessarily, because if you are, let's just say you're at four generations and you want to search this person's deeper in the fan chart tree, you can right click over it and say view tree and it will move Melissa here, Melissa, I think is her name, into the center. So if we hit view tree, she's now in the center and now we've gone out a few more generations. So do you need it? It's convenient. When you're ready to go back to the home person, which I have myself in my settings set as the home person, then it will put me back in the center by clicking the home button and it puts me back here. And with Pro Tools, I can go out to seven generations. I wish it was more actually. You know, we always want more, right? Okay, so that is the fan chart with Pro Tools. You have Tree Checker. You can get the Tree Checker from here. So you click on that and it pops up with this new report. So this new report says that my tree is a 7.7 .7 good rating. Personally, I do not care because I'm always focused on one ancestor at a time or one family unit. That's all I care about. I could hardly care less about all of the other little hints and things going on in the rest of the tree that I may have imported from decades and decades ago. So long story short, I'm always focused on just one person. However, there is a tree rating, just saying. So it tells me possible duplicates. Now this is something that I would be interested in. It says there's 1,937 people that are that have no documentation. I'm not surprised because sometimes when I'm doing DNA research, I am exercising the strategy of the quick and dirty tree just to fill out the descendants. A lot of times I will use one record though to just verify it, but it doesn't mean that I necessarily attach that record to those people as I'm doing that. Then once I discover who that DNA cousin matches and I link them to the tree, I go back and I verify all of that. So 
Long story short, I'm not surprised. Only tree documentation. I'm not exactly sure what that is, honestly. I have no clue. No clue. But it does filter these lists, right? So you can then click on more filters. You can say uh, you want to search by location. This is a big one that a lot of people have been asking for from Ancestry is the ability to search by location. And at least you can search in your tree by location here. You can look for possible errors. You can turn off these filters and just get a full list. Let's go back to where we were. Let's see, tools, tree checker. And now I'm back to where I was and other possible errors. You kind of have to play with it to figure out exactly what they're talking about with some of these, but you also have this tool icon where it shows a lot of the Pro Tools stuff right here. Let's go to Tree Mapper. This is a cool one. So here it shows you all of your people in your tree. This is my tree up here, okay? And where those people are, we can go and say end of line. We could go paternal, maternal. So if we wanted to go to the paternal line, and maybe I wanted to see the end of the line, meaning how far out into the tree I have gone. It's, it's kind of interesting. So you can stack your filters. You could also stack your location. So I do a lot of work in North Carolina, so there's probably a lot there and it can keep narrowing. Now you can sit there and, and click on any of these circles and you get a list of people that are in that location. Now I think this is kind of cool. Now how useful it is, it depends on what your research question is and what your, your plan is here, but you have a lot. And you can also filter by your tree tags. In my case, I have some custom tree tags, so maybe I want left off here which it doesn't show anybody there, so I'm gonna turn that off. But if I was looking for people that were part of the Quaker church in that area, maybe there was a couple different Quaker meeting houses that they belong to, you could certainly do this. Now this appears to me to be an and feature, not an or feature. So this is paternal line and end of line. So if I want to turn that off, now I get a lot more. So if I want paternal line and, say the back creek, this was a custom tree tag that I created. So now I can say my paternal line and that were tagged. Remember I tagged them because I verified them in records that they were part of the Quaker church. Then I've got these people here. If I turn that off, I might get a lot more. Okay. So you just play with your filters. So be aware that it's an and feature. See, I was already filtering to North Carolina, paternal line, and that one Quaker church. So just pay attention to your filters when you are, are doing this. So if I turn all of that off, now I go back to, it would be cool if they had a clear all filters. I don't know, maybe they have it at the bottom, but they don't. So uh, Ancestry, if you're listening, that would be a good one. Clear all filters and start again. Now, another one of the features for Pro Tools is if we go up here and hover over the tree options, we have charts and reports. Now, one thing I can tell you is that when you click on that, it's going to automatically generate a report based on who's in the center. Well, let's go find somebody else that might be a little more fun. So I clicked into the profile by accident, but here's how you can get back. So you can get charts and reports from here. You can check facts from here, or if you want to go back to the tree, we don't have the view in tree in, I miss this. They used to have the view in tree here. You now have to go up to tools and say view in tree. And now we can now see William McFarland Smith in the view in tree view. So you can get to it either way. You can get to this charts and reports that we're getting ready to talk about from the profile view or from the tree view. So if we were to do that from here and we click on that, now we get a report that's automatically generated in a variety of styles. I personally like the family group sheets. I always have. We have some new colored reports, like we can have the oak report, we can have a maple report. So they've got a couple different designs. Here's the birch. I think they're kind of nice looking reports. If you wanted to print them out for a family history book or something at the holidays, you can do descendancy reports. You can do on and reports. You can do register style reports. 
Personally, I think the easiest thing to read for anybody who is never really into family history or something, and you're maybe giving it away or sharing it with somebody, is the family group sheet report. You can print it, you can download it, you could download it and put it together in a PDF so you could do a lot of different different profiles like this and then put it together in a book. All really cool. Again, this is part of the Pro Tools. Now, if you'll notice, there is a focus person here. You can change the focus person if you want to enter somebody else's name. So you could probably sit here and crank out a bunch of reports based on a family group or a family line, whatever rocks your world. So if you wanted to get back to him, we could go back to him. And now we're back here. So if we go back to the tree view for a moment, you'll see the focus person is down here at the bottom. So if I had gone to another person, let's look at his profile. We could jump to it from here as well. We could go to charts and reports and bada bing, it's going to remember where I left off using family group sheets. I could then pick the Oak style report if I wanted to. I could then download it and then combine all of those downloads. It's a PDF document. So I could then combine these into a document using all these PDFs. I just organize them. I use Acrobat Reader to combine. Apparently there's lots of different options for that. So that is charts and reports. Jumping back into Tree Mapper for a moment, again, a pro tool um, thing. They have this new Try the Beta Tree Mapper. So if you want to click on that, it's kind of interesting in that I believe this is only in the United States right now, but it just gives you a the same thing, different view. So you can sit there and, and see how many people that you have in each location. Now I can tell you this is, it says people, but it's really documents, kind of. So I know that I have some ancestors that appear in Ohio and West Virginia and Virginia. One person, like one ancestor that appears in all three states. So he's counted every time in all of those states. Another one of the pro tools, if you come over here uh, up to the top, you have insights. This is what I consider gee whiz information. Okay. So when I first came here, I thought, okay, this is interesting. It says the number one surname in my family tree is Davis and number two is Booth and Walls and Henley and so on. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. I didn't scroll down. So there's a lot more down here. Oldest person living in my tree is 135 years old. I don't think so. So that is something that I need to go investigate and clean up because clearly somebody didn't live to be 135 years. If they did, I'm glad to have their DNA in my, <laughs> maybe I'll live that long. Who knows? There's which women in your tree had the most children, 19 children. I don't think so. I'll bet you anything. If I drill into this person, there are multiples by the same name. There's like three James whatever, and so on. So this is just a great way to kind of check your tree again in a different fashion. Who is the youngest married couple? A three-year-old? Again, I don't think so. So again, there's something goofy with the dates there. So clearly I need to clean that up. So that is insights on Pro Tools. Another highly requested feature that people have been asking for for a long time is the ability to print a list of all the people in their tree. It's part of Pro Tools. So you can click find in tree and list all people. And when you do, you get this list of all people. You can then download that list if you want. You can view them all. There's lots of them, lots and lots and lots of them. I personally don't print a list of all people in my tree. It's constantly evolving. I have 4,195 people as of today in my tree and a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. And so, yeah, nobody's tree is perfect, by the way. I don't know if you remember when we were looking at that tree checker and it gave us this, this list of, I don't know, a rating, a tree rating. I, again, I don't care. I'm working on that one person at a time. So uh, anyway, that's some of the pro tools. Well, in, in other news from Ancestry, Ancestry announced a collaboration with the National Archives and Records Administration, also known as NARA. In May 2024, they announced the new multi-year agreement with the National Archives to digitize and index, publish, and publish tens of millions of NARA records on their platform in the next five years. 
This will be Ancestry's largest public-private archive uh, collaboration to date. Now, also at RootsTech, Ancestry announced that they had, were moving to kind of a different membership model where it would be a worldwide all-inclusive plan with the only difference is being an individual plan versus a family plan. I recently checked with Ancestry and we're still waiting to hear back on any updates for this one, but as of this recording, we don't have any new news on that. How would you feel if you could resolve some of those brick walls in your family tree? Or maybe you're just getting started in genealogy. What if you had the skills to prove your family history, taking you back generation by generation, time and time again? Hi, my name is Connie Knox and here at the Genealogy TV Academy, I help genealogy enthusiasts like you break down brick walls by learning smart research methods. I help you find the records and I help you get organized so that you can share your family history with your family and future generations. I do this through a monthly membership course. There are two components to this. Now there is the self-guided platform where you can take the courses on your own time. And well, I'm adding one new lesson per month. And then the live Zoom meetings where you can watch a live presentation in the virtual classroom and participate in the discussion after the presentation. Now, if you can't make one of the live sessions, don't worry, all the programs are recorded and are added in the course platform following the presentation. So are you ready to learn some new skills to help prove your family history, get organized and break down some of those brick walls? All right, well, if you wanna learn more, hit the get start button to learn a little bit more about pricing and, and how you can get signed up. All right, we'll see you in the virtual classroom.